It is easy to form art in the mind. The hard part is realizing it in materials. This is a quote by Henry Glassy, a well-known folklorist and ethnomusicologist. And he's right. How does an artist take an idea, something that's just a concept, sometimes even just a feeling or a belief system, and make that idea, that intangible thing, into something we can look at and hold or just walk around and see in the material world? This is the whole concept behind the current exhibition that's up at the time of the recording at the American Folk Art Museum. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Gronke, and I'm an access educator at the American Folk Art Museum, where I bring these Folk Art Reflections video visits to you. Today, we're going to get a closer look at this exhibition by looking at three artworks that each of them have something very interesting about the materials that the artist chose to use that may not be apparent at first look. Let's get a look at the inside of the exhibition. It's called Material Witness, Folk and Self-Taught Artists at Work. It's up from March 17th to October 29th in the year 2023. Brooke Wyatt is the curator. And here is the first artwork I would like to show you. Before I tell you anything about it, including who made it or when it was made or what it's even made of, I would like you to just take a moment to look at it. Take a close look and see what you're noticing. This is a great time to pause the video if you're with someone and share with the people around you what you're seeing. What does this look like to you? I'll share with you what I notice while I'm zooming in here so you can get a closer look at the details. It sort of reminds me of seaweed. It looks like a drawing, perhaps, of some plants, but I can't tell exactly what kind. And as I'm getting closer, I hope you're noticing that there's something interesting about those pink and red lines. You might be able to tell at this point that the artist didn't just use drawing materials to make these lines. The artist used embroidery thread. She punctured holes through the paper and sewed on some of the lines. Can you see it? Let's take a look at the whole piece again. This was made by artist Anna Zemankova. She was from the Czech Republic and she made this piece around the 1970s. The Folk Art Museum has several works of hers in the collection, all of them somewhat fantastical drawings, all of them somewhat floral, and almost all of them have some sort of added feature of either beadwork or embroidery added to them. For you, what do you think the embroidery adds? Do you think it adds something special to the artwork? I wonder why Anna Zamankova used embroidery thread. I have different ideas. I remember learning that she used to do these drawings very late at night sometimes if she woke up and if she found herself in a very difficult state of mind, she would do these drawings just sort of without planning them in advance, just drawing and drawing and letting the forms take shape, which is a really wonderful thing to do for yourself. And then I imagine her the next day looking at it and thinking, I wish it had more color. I wish it looked more like a bright flower. And then I imagine that she didn't necessarily have markers and crayons around her house, but she might have had embroidery thread and that she realized that she had this skill of sewing and embroidering, and that's how she added color and texture to her creations. It's possible. Artists have to be resourceful. And speaking of resourceful artists, the next artwork I wanna show you is by an artist much loved in our collection 
who absolutely had to be resourceful with the materials he used. Now, I realized I already gave you a little bit of a clue, but before I share any more information, this is a great time to pause the video and share with people around you what you think the artist used to make this artwork. Take a good study and see what you can see. Now, like before, I'm going to zoom in on the side of the drawing because as you will see where those nice bold curved lines are, there's sort of a gray shading. And as you get closer, you're going to see that that gray shading is in fact text. This artist used parts of a magazine to do his drawing. And he created the illusion of form with shade and line. Can you see the text going vertically? We'll go back to the full image again, and you'll see that the photo in the middle was also taken from a magazine. This artwork was made by Martin Ramirez. He was originally from Mexico, but much of his adult life was in California, unfortunately living in a psychiatric institution. Over those decades that he was there, he made hundreds of artworks and he used whatever he could to create these artworks. As we've seen in this one, he used pieces from a magazine and very, very clever use of lines and shading to create the illusion almost, some people say it looks sort of like a stage or the interior of a box. He creates space in a perfectly two-dimensional artwork. Now in this, piece, it looks like he had access to crayons, paints, and obviously the collage materials that we could see. But in other artworks in our collection, it's clear that he was being extremely resourceful, sometimes pasting together two pieces of paper that weren't big enough for the piece he wanted by using a paste that he made himself with oatmeal. Sometimes he used berry juices to stain the artworks to the right color. I admire the way Martin Ramirez not only made excellent use of the materials that were provided for him in the institution where he was, but if his vision for an artwork was literally bigger than the paper they gave him, he found a way to expand the paper. That must have taken so much patience and determination and experimentation as well. The final artwork I want to show you is made by an artist from our collection who's well known for his very brilliant, expansive, and experimental palette of paints. Here is a painting. Take a look at the colors in particular. If you're watching this with someone, now is a great time to pause the video and just, just focus on the colors. I see white in the background. I see a figure in the foreground. The figure has shades of red, brown, almost like I don't want to say orange, but like a very warm brown, light brown on her face. What colors do you see? Now, after noticing all these different colors, what if I tell you that this artist did not use traditional paints? Jimmy Lee Suddeth was a self-taught artist who had the most inventive techniques using sugar-based syrups like sorghum molasses to mix his own palette of colors. He would use things like mud, which has a lot of iron in it. He would use grass clippings. He would use soot. He would make his own palette of colors. And in fact, this artwork was made with crayon and with mud. Now, Jimmy Lee Suddeth was not opposed to using traditional paints. 
In fact, the Folk Art Museum has several pieces in the collection that are made using store-bought paints. But there was this inventive side of him that apparently from a very young age got him trying to create his own palette, his own array of colors, noticing the natural world and using the natural world to make his own colored palette. I imagine that this made him a very keen observer of the world, not only as an artist who loves to paint, but as almost a scientist, seeing what's around him, seeing what will stick and figuring out how to make that color stay. I happen to be very partial to all those warm colors that Jimmy Lee Sedeth got in that painting. Let's take a little review of the three artworks that we saw today. We started with Anna Zimankova's floral drawings that she added embroidery to. Then we saw Martin Ramirez's drawing and painting on top of parts of a magazine to create an illusion of space. And then we saw the brilliant warm palette created by Jimmy Lee Suddeth, mostly created from the natural world. So as you can see from those three artworks, you don't necessarily need art supplies to make art. So here's my little invitation to you right this moment. Thinking about Anna Zemankova and how she used embroidery thread to get that brilliant pink on her page. Look around the room that you're in right now. Take a scan and see if you had to add a bright color, a bright line to something, and you didn't have a crayon or you didn't have a pencil, colored pencil or paint or anything near you, what could you use that's in your room that would give you a bright line? Do you see anything? I looked around and I see a shoelace that's brightly colored and I could use that on a piece of paper if I needed to, I realize. What about Martin Ramirez and the use of magazine as paper for his drawing? If you had to make a drawing right now on a piece of paper, but you don't have a blank piece of paper, what could you use? Look around your space and see what you have that could possibly be used to make a piece of art. And then finally, thinking about Jimmy Lee Suddeth, what materials do you think you could squish up or turn into colors in your space? The only thing I saw in my space was maybe, maybe an edge of a plant that I could squish up and see what color it makes. I'd have to experiment a bit. I hope you've enjoyed exploring this exhibition called Material Witness, which I encourage you to visit our online digital guide that's been created. It's available both in Spanish and in English, and it's a wonderful way to take a deep dive into the different parts of the exhibition and to specific artworks and artists. Thank you so much for joining me today. I enjoyed sharing this exhibition with you and I'll see you at the next video visit.